What is up, guys? Happy Sunday to everyone. I think we're going to have a little quick live stream. Got some uh, some damage to fix up. <laughs> Thankfully, it is not the new quad. It is not the Red October quad. But uh, unfortunately, I had a little incident today. But on the plus side, I didn't get the Red October done. I finished this last night after the last live show. I went ahead and finished sealing up the main receiver and a few other little odds and ends, but got it all kind of set up and rocking. Got props on. I already had beta flight flashed, and I took it out today and maidened it. And sure enough, it flew absolutely gorgeous. I am super, super happy with this. Cheers, Armando. This, uh, it lifted off, was smooth as glass. Uh, the new motors are just, uh, you can sure tell the difference. It just, it's just awesome. And, uh, yeah, all in all, no, nothing bad to say. It had no bad habits. Took it out for a little burn. I uh, didn't get under the hood yet and get, uh, any amount of FPV done, but I did take this quad out today. And unfortunately I did not have as good of luck. Uh, the, <laughs> I updated to the newest beta flight a short time ago, I think, uh, sometime last week, and it flies so darn good, I was having such a blast, and I done went and flew it right into the ground, and what happened is the top plate is shattered, uh, I don't know how I did this, but the actual uh, FPV camera mount is buckled as well. I would have, I've never seen that before. I just can't believe that happened. But other than that, everything's pretty good. Cost, there's a couple of props. These style props are twisted up pretty good on the back. So it's a good excuse now for maybe do some upgrades on this one and fix this up. Uh, not much to it. It's, <laughs> it's just repeal and replace the, the junk, uh, bad components. And I think with any luck, I do have a top plate for this. Actually, I should check that before we go streaming and everything. I have this goal RC 210 that you saw on the channel before and I do believe we should be able to rob this top plate and use it um, I see no reason why not and in fact I think that camera plate will work for this camera as well and sure enough it will um, I'm using a, a, a Sony board camera in it so I think we can I think we can scam the parts off of that I see no reason why not I don't uh, I don't intend on using this Goal RC quad anymore. It has some uh, kind of how you doing motors on it. They're not they're not anything like these uh, the Emax Red Bottoms. So I think we will strip it, steal some parts, and maybe give this thing the upgrades it needs. Um, we'll heat shrink these ESCs on like we did on the Red October quad, I think, and do a little nicer job because these zip ties are digging into things a little bit. Maybe not working the best. I think we can do better. Yeah. I think we can do better, but we'll see. That prop is garbage. I think these two front props are fine. They look to be fine. I think we can salvage them. But, yeah, it's I don't know. I've been I've been looking for an excuse to get the props off of it to update the ESC firmware, and I forget what else. There was something else I needed to do, but I needed the props off, and I just didn't want to even take them off. So this is kind of the excuse to do some long-needed maintenance, I guess. See if I can stay on camera a little bit better. I don't know. We'll see what we can do with it. And this prop is junk. I thought about upgrading the camera, but to be honest, I'm quite happy with the way this board camera works, except for today when I smashed it into the crown, which was not the camera's fault. That was definitely my eyes. Not working. <laughs> it is a C fit for sure. Controlled flight into terrain. Actually, that prop seems like it's got a little bit of wow in it. 
We might not end up reusing those. Good excuse to change the prop color, too. Hey, why not? Alright, let's go ahead and get the get the top plate off. Good evening from WV. Looking for another... Yeah, cool. Uh, where's a good place to buy these kits? Uh, these ones are both from... Well, this... The GB210 is from GearBest. Uh, there's a video on my channel of the initial look at it, and there's a link in the description of that video. If you use that link, they, I get a little credit for it. Uh, but yeah, these ones are just gear best. I believe Banggood sells the same one. And then um, I actually ordered two spare frame kits from uh, eBay, actually. And... Um, those should be hopefully coming before too long. With any luck. Wrong thing. The set screw came loose on my nut driver. That's not so pleasant. I actually noticed it was getting loose before. I should have tightened it down. Uh, why didn't I? That would have been smarter. Because now I need an Allen key. And of course, every one I grab is not the correct one. How about that one? Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Jeez. Uh, curse of the live streamer. The minute you go live, that's when things fall apart. I don't have my spare Allen keys down here. They are upstairs. Thing. You rotten thing. Move the camera a bit. Where are all my spare Allen keys? There. One of these should be the right one. These are just uh, Amazon specials. I love these nut drivers. They're they're bloody fantastic. Except. Uh, of course, that looks like it's got a standard set screw and a metric Allen key. Come on, really? Are you kidding me right now? Why would they do that? There, that should be good enough for now. Not the best. So sorry about that, guys. There. Good to go. Take my 3D printed action camera mount off of here if we can. Looks like the standoffs may have got a little bit worked and it might have stripped out one one Allen screw here. I might have to replace those as well. But I've been meaning to replace them with longer ones anyway, so that's fine. Good time to do all of this stuff. Evans here. Cheers, Evan. And maybe so I have to rep I have to repair my FPV mount too because it got dunked in the crash too. Just one corner of it broke off because I didn't acetone bath this. This is ABS and it works great, but it's got these thin risers up the side to keep your Mobius or Run Cam in place. But I didn't acetone bath it and it's forever breaking. I think what I'll do is well that's off too. I'll vapor bath it in acetone and give that thing some longevity. I think that would be a smart idea. Because I've got to do the other one for the Red October quad. I didn't install the FPV or the, uh, the run cam mount yet. So that would be a good thing to get done as well. We'll see. Bit by bit. This is the first major repair I've had to do to this quad. So... Uh, I've been pretty fortunate with it. Let's see if I can get this hot glue to let go. Just a little bit of hot glue around your battery leads works pretty good to protect them from shorting through on the carbon. And now I'll take the antenna off. And the nut, which is probably going to be screaming tight. I don't... 
Are we going to get lucky? It's the same size as the prop nut. Oh yeah, how handy is that? How handy is that? Same size as our prop nut. Thanks for all the information last night. I ordered the board you recommended. Oh, that's the the buck converter. Yeah, I use uh, I use those little buck converters in all kinds of uh, Arduino and electronics projects. Um, they are they are actually marketed for RC aircraft. And yeah, when you said you just didn't have the the uh, voltage regulator for your ESCs, well, for I think those things were 99 cents or. A dollar twenty-nine or something. Not very much money. That'll get you in the air. Should do the trick for you. So I've just got zip ties underneath holding these antennas up in this V configuration. And we'll go ahead and we cut the zip tie without cutting the antenna. And I, we're, we'll replace them and reheat shrink everything. That should be kind of interesting to try and get the heat shrink off of there. We'll have to probably cut it. But in the process, I think we'll decase. Like this is this was one of my first 210 builds, and I just left the receiver in the case here. I think we'll decase that and get get that cleaned up too. Why not, right? We'll go ahead and take. Um, let's. What should we do first? I guess we should get this crap off of here. Hot glue frame pieces out of the way. And I'll just have a look and make sure all of our flight control and everything is still happy in here. It's been a while since I've been this deep into this quad. We'll see see how she's holding up. Should be holding up pretty good, I do believe. I haven't had any problems with it. Flies great, except when you smash it into the ground like I did today, which was kinda dumb. But yeah. I love the I love these two ten frames as you've heard me say many times before. The standoff came out. It's okay. Um, our board cam. Let's do that first. We need to change the board cam, and I think what we'll do. I think what we should do is update this lens. Um, I have now, that I didn't have at the time I built this, in here somewhere should be uh, GoPro Hero 2 lenses. And I put one on the Red October. There they are. Two of them. I put one on the Red October and I haven't used the other. I think. I think it would be just grand if that's the right thread and it surely is to go ahead and update that to a nice big wide angle lens let's do that too we're going to give this quad a whole new lease on life she's going to be one happy little machine let's go ahead and take the lens out first good that came off he saw i just took a uh, there was a gob of hot glue on the bottom of it as well. That's what I use to keep these lenses from loosening off. Because they do have a little habit of doing that if they're not retained by something. A little more than just the jam nut. But a little little hot glue does the trick. Alright. Let's see if the little jam nut is going to be the same thread. And then we'll know it's going to fit in here. And I believe it will. And I suspect we should be able to focus it just fine with any luck. Perfect. Take our GoPro lens. Oh yeah. Just like it was meant to be. That's perfect. This camera I think was from Surveil Zone or somewhere. I forget. I actually had it from I stole it from my FT Versa wing that I haven't been flying in a long time. Perfect. Let's put the jam nut tight right somewhere around here so we don't smash it into the image sensor. And then we'll focus that later once we're all done with everything. Wires to the bottom. Oh yeah, we're in good shape. We'll save that lens. We'll use it another day. Hopefully we don't need it. If I need that lens, well it means I smashed up the 
camera. Uh, I wish I had a spare run cam for this right now. I, I'm really loving the run cams lately. And actually, I'm loving run cam as a company lately, too. When I had that trouble with my action camera, they just sent me new parts. No questions asked. All right, short side to the top. Oh, crap. <laughs> Good thing we did that. I can't get the board off because of my, our big, silly new GoPro lens is so darn big it won't fit off. She can't come out the hole. All right, let's go rob some parts from the Goal RC. Let's steal some goodies from this one. Steal the goodies. I think this damn Allen key is going to come loose. I might have to run upstairs and grab my spares. We need the camera plate and this top plate. I wish these... That's the only weakness of this frame, in my opinion. I wish the top plate was 4 mil. And then, you would, then we'd really be cooking. Then it would be a really great quad. I, I do believe some people have mentioned that there is a, a thicker top plate available out there, but I haven't seen where to buy it personally. One of these days I'll go looking. Perfect, perfect. Lots of spare hardware. And side plates, just dead weight. Was any luck? How does that fasten in there? It looks like it's just stuck. There we go. With any luck, that's going to be the same. Oh, and it is. Beauty, again, of these frames. Very universal. They're all the same. Okay, small side to the top. Small side to the top, take the lens back off, try not to fill this full of dust. And we can put our screws back in. Excellent. That should do the trick. Excelente. That should do the trick. Excellent. Yeah, it was a fun... It's a fun flight up until when I creamed this thing into the ground. I very seldom do that. Like, I've been known to hit objects, and uh, that's two times in the last three weeks that I flopped right into the ground. The last one you would have saw on Friday's video where I flopped it into the long grass, which I, I truthfully could have recovered that. I just let it. I just, I just killed it, and... Uh, disarmed. I should have actually flown out of that because there was no reason to let it flop. But today's was, <laughs> there was no coming back from it. Although the quad was sitting upright and the battery was still on. <laughs> she was not in good shape. The props were pretzelized. And well, I had further inspection, the top plate was broke. So yeah, it's all part of the fun, I guess. All part of the fun. Like I said earlier, it was, it's a good excuse to get this thing apart and get get some of the maintenance done that I've been putting off forever. I think that lens is getting in my way enough that I can't start the screw straight. Damn it. That sucks. The more time this spends with the lens open, the more dust is going to get in there. It's just going to be harder for me to clean out later. Oh well, such is life, I guess. Such is life. I don't remember having to widen this before, but I might have to now. I think, sure enough, we have a problem. That is never going to reach. We just need a tiny little bit more width on the holes. So, we got to get out our Dremel tool. Oh well, minor, minor. It only needs not even a millimeter. Yeah, I'll just do it right here on the bench. That'll be fine. I don't think I'll make too much of a mess. 
Famous last words, right? Famous last words. That should do the trick. There should be lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots wide enough now. Excellent. What are you guys building tonight? Anybody out there building something cool? Quadcopters or otherwise? I am really excited. The chassis for the Mars rover project is showing up on... I believe tomorrow or Tuesday from Walmart. Walmart online. And I will have a place to install Raspberry Pi and multiple Arduinos and a whole bunch of wiring. I gotta figure out the steering, how I'm gonna do that, because I'm gonna have to rig up some kind of a gearbox with either probably a stepper motor or something to drive it. And then I can, I don't know, it's going to be kind of fun through the winter time. We'll have lots of different stuff we can do with that. It's going to be an interesting project, I think. Sweet. That is that. We have camera with a new lens, a new backer plate. I don't know how I'll secure this. Good old hot glue. So I think I think I remember having these loosen off over time. That carbon plate for some reason would resonate. And I think I remember having to put a little dob. I guess I can do it after. I can do it later once everything else is done. Where's our new top plate? Let's see if it fits. Wouldn't that be handy? I hope it fits. But it should. Sure enough, we line up with standoffs. Oh yeah. That'll do. That'll do. Whew. Maybe deal with the speed control, or the receiver, I should say. <laughs> Things. Uh, I had a rough go the other day. The other day I had it. Um, I forget what actually happened. Somehow... Somehow ended up rolling it over. I think I was messing around on takeoff or on landing. Anyway, this this uh, this antenna got into the props and chopped up my heat shrink a little bit. That's okay. So I had all I had on, on site was a, a garbage bag twist tie. <laughs> So I went ahead and applied that as the field expedient solution. Andrew's here. Cheers, Andrew. How's it going tonight? Things are fantastic here. Quad, I think, is going to come out of this with no lasting harm. She's going to be happy again. Not nearly as cool looking as the Red October build, but... This is uh this has just been a workhorse for me. This is the one oh yeah, you guys haven't seen the I did a dry out video from Dunkin' It in the Pond and I never finished editing that video. It's still sitting on my desktop on how I recovered all the components and had no no damage whatsoever, no lasting damage other than the reason it fell out of the sky was the uh the board cam that I was using actually quit. That was the only component I had to change after it got swamped in the pond. It was an easy fix up. And even I didn't actually even take the quad apart. I think we're 
gonna have to. Yeah. I don't want to use a razor blade on this because I don't want to cut into the coax. But you can't see this because I'm off camera, as always. Oof. I might have to. There's no coax up here. It's just it's just the live element, so we can cut that. And then we'll replace all this heat shrink later, and she will be spiffy and new again. Spiffy and new. Junk. Let's go back to the side counter. Snippy, snip, snip. And then we'll use, oh, we'll use a some nice new clear heat shrink and do the whole ESC. And then let's depin a bunch of it too. Let's get rid of all these useless pins that we don't need. They've been on there too long. They're just taking up space. We don't need those. Oogie dookie. That's. Okay, so we're using iBus, so we're going to need up there. And then we also, um, in the way I've got this hooked up on this SP Racing F3, we have to feed it power and ground as well from uh, the onboard UBEC. So we have one other connection going in. So what I'll do is we'll remember, don't deep in your bind plug. Uh, you could and just bring some wires out, but it's so much easier. Just leave the bind plug just in case, because any receiver, there's always the remote possibility that you'll lose bind, and someday you'll need to rebind. And that sucks when you've removed the pins, thinking, oh, that's great, we don't need any of these. And then you're, then you're into disassembling your whole quad and ruins your day, because it takes all night to tear back into it. Just no bueno. So we'll take all the pins off except for we'll leave the bind plug and then I think we'll leave one more as well just for kicks. Just for kicks. Make sure that does not. These are tiny screws. Got to be careful they don't end up in your motor bell. These are small enough that they can get in there and then get in between your magnets and your stator and then that's not so not so or in between the yeah, magnets in the stator. Not so pleasant when that happens. Okie dokie. There's a little bit of oil on here from when I dried it out. That's okay. Make sure we plug it back in the right way. We did. Perfect. Let's go and get a better camera angle for you guys. Perfect. We'll leave the bind plug. And we're going to just snippy snip all the rest because we don't need them. They're going to shoot all over the place. Where your safety squints, as ABE would say. Because these things are going to fire across the shop. Doink, 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 doink. You go now. And immediately... As soon as I go to turn around, I guarantee I'm going to get one of these right in my foot. <laughs> and I believe they're non-ferrous, otherwise I would have just stuck a magnet to them, but I'm pretty sure these are an alloy. And so I'll just let them go, do their thing. You go, little pins, you go. Snip, snip, snip. There, it's all of them. Ha! There, much, much nicer. I don't know why I never did this when I first built this quad. I guess it never crossed my mind to do a nicer job on the build. <laughs> it, it did the job. I guess I, I probably thought I was doing okay at the time. All right, let's get some Super Monster DigiKey heat shrink out. Let's go with a length right up to the plug to a little bit past on this end should do the trick try and cut it at 
semi right angle. And I need to switch my exacto blade because that one is dull as hell. All right. Oof, that's way too long. Why was I on crack when I did that? Jeez. It was just a moment ago. I was dreaming. Why well, I decided that's going to be way too long. That's going to interfere with stuff underneath. I'll just take up as much space as the original case. That's no good. There. That'll be a little bit more gooder. I think that will be a little more gooder. Yeah. There. Something. Yeah, that'll do. Let's go. Let's go put that on there. And I'll shrink it down. Unnecessary steps for tonight, but heck, while we're in here, we'll do it. Let's use the my web hot air rework station. Pull it out from the wall. Notice how I have some aluminum tape on the wall because there has been a time or two I forgot and it will burn right through the wall. Uh, make sure we're full, full air and at 400 degrees. And we shrinky shrinky. Something so satisfying about heat shrink. Especially this stuff. The, it is quite crazy the ratio at which it shrinks down the stuff is it goes a lot smaller than it started over 50 percent i forget the ratios on the product page on digikey when i got it so i knew it was going to be good for esc's um, receivers and such i actually bought it for esc's handy little happenstance. It works great for these receivers. And that'll be just perfect. This thing's going to be one happy little quad. This is going to be easier for me to... Uh, oh, we should have conformal coated that. Where was I on that? We could have conformal coated this while I had it apart. Waterproofed it. Oh well, next time. Next time. I think what I'll do is I'll just put a little hot glue in the ends and just seal it permanently. Ouch. Just hot. 400 degrees is hot. Would have never guessed. Excelente. Hello. Happy, happy. Let that cool off just a little bit. I think my goopy gun should be running and it is maybe before that cools down we'll just go ahead I'm just going to hose this with hot glue just to seal that up and we'll seal this in too just like that it is completely sealed and the hot glue is removable with a little bit of alcohol. If we should ever need in there, which I hope we won't. I did hot glue the the bind plug there, so no matter what, I'd have to do a little bit of work to get that back off. But still, at least it's there. Done and done. Done and dusted. Okay, I remember Red October needs a glob of, this quad needs a glob of hot glue right as a strain relief. I didn't do any strain relief on my ESC wires, because I was, I forget why there was a reason, but for some reason I didn't get that done. That will do there. cools off I think we'll go ahead and put a little bit in for our battery cable here which I didn't do I was going to use automotive goop glue for this but I think let's just go with a little bit of good old hot snot so it's so much easier to remove 
And I like the semi-transparent nature of this. It's less intrusive. There, that should be perfect. And stop act as a strain relief as well as stop from cutting in to the arm, which would be catastrophic. That would be exceedingly bad if the positive lipo lead gets in to the carbon fiber. That'd be undesirable. Just hold that for a moment. <laughs> Catch up on the chat. You guys are a quiet bunch tonight. And we're in good shape once that once that one kind of cools and sets, then our broken quad should be all set. We can switch back to that and kind of well, kind of finish up assembly, pretty much. I might, there we go. All set. Uh, 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 beauty. Pretty pretty. That'll do. Cords. Got audio cords bashing all over the place here. What's going on? I have to use a headset on this PC for whatever reason. I just couldn't get any of my microphones to work for this live show. Uh, after many tries, I settled on wearing a headset, but all I have is a wired one, just forever in the way. Alright, that's still quite hot, but I'll just try to avoid destroying my fingers. And I'll go ahead, sort of set things into place, and get ready to install. I think we'll be in good shape. Sweet. And then that, I forget where I'm running the lipo. I think I wanted to move the lipo slightly on this one, but for now, we'll just sort of set things together. Why is that plate putting so much force? Oh, no, it's all right. We's good. We's good. It's impossible for me to do this and keep the not block the camera with my hands every two seconds, but I do try not to. These um, these frame screws are slightly longer from the Goal RC, so we're going to use those. Ideally, you should switch these out. I actually went to my local hardware store, and they don't sell them. Uh, I'd like to switch these out for something like Oh, a couple centimeters long, because these the standoffs are threaded all the way through, and then it would be significantly stronger. But there's drawbacks to making things stronger that don't need to be, because it'll break in uh, unintended ways. Whereas uh, if push comes to shove, my thought process, if if we get into a, a bad situation and smack the thing, uh, these being, these screws being less threads will be more likely to pull out and maybe spare the frame, absorbing some of that energy, but there, there is a major weakness with this frame, and it is right at the back, it's the, well, it's the only weakness that I can really say I love it, but there's no support back here on the back end. It has two sets of standoffs at the front, but right where my lipo is, it's completely, um, it's just an open, open unsupported gap. And I think that's why our frame broke today. Uh, well, I know so. It was actually the force of the lipo just punched through and snapped it. So, yeah, oh, he's okay though. So I'm just going to set these in for tonight because I'm going to vapor bath that our um, our action camera mount tomorrow. Can't do that tonight because I have to. I have a, a rice cooker outside in the shed that I use that I got at the the local thrift store, and I don't like using uh <laughs> firing that up anywhere near my house that's oh no we're all right 
is, well, obviously boiling acetone is something you don't want to have close by your house. Uh, where do you usually get all your parts? eBay, Banggood, your best. I hate the slow boat. Uh, I do everything slow boat. There's uh, videos on my channel how to how I buy things from eBay. And there's two different iterations of that video, but it's always the same. All the components that I don't need right away, uh, they come from slow boat from eBay China. Uh, top rated seller. Buy it now. Free shipping. And it's the same process for everything I get now for some quad parts um, and hobby parts I do like supporting my local hobby shop which here is Great Hobbies in Ontario I do buy some stuff from Great Hobbies but they don't sell squat for um, mini quad stuff at all um, really quite disappointed for my fixed wing stuff I got and I had no problems getting things from him, so I meant to talk to the owner about that. I do have his email address. But, uh, yeah, and some things I get from Amazon, actually, lately. I've had good luck with Amazon lately. Uh, they're starting to stock more things. The video transmitter in the Red October I actually picked up. It's an AOM way, and I picked it up right from uh, Amazon.ca. It was the last one that was in stock, but was perfect since I needed one since I cooked one on a live show here which was totally stupid it is it is still working but I don't trust it because I know I witnessed it flow uh, I think about three amps through the uh, Ubex circuit yeah that there's no way that can still be alive but it, it is functional but oh I don't trust it so Got a replacement right from Amazon. All right. Oh, yeah. We's in good shape. This is like a brand new Quadima bobble now. Like brand new. We just have to fasten that receiver up. We'll go ahead. I'm going to get rid of these zip ties holding these speed controls because that was never a good idea the way I did that. But it, well, it actually worked fine. Fuck, I shouldn't say that. It did work fine. It's just. Now I have better ways. Now I have much better ways. We can use this monster heat shrink and stretch it over the motor. And this one, this one actually, the zip tie slid down more than once and actually ripped the uh, the the original heat shrink, which is not good because if it's sliding down like that, enough to rip that stuff, which is actually pretty hefty. Uh, the MOSFETs, the surface mount MOSFETs, are right underneath it, and I don't like that. So we will fix this up with more of the handy-dandy heat shrink. We will make some nifty little holders, nifty little kind of bands. You can just, a lot of people, most people just use black electrical tape, but... I think that looks ugly. We can do something nicer with this stuff. And it may not be totally beautiful, but it'll definitely look better than black electrical tape, in my opinion. And it's also easily removable. Just a quick snip. And it doesn't leave all the adhesive behind that the black electrical tape would leave. What program do you use to make Android apps? I didn't use a program. It's just just raw code, just standard. Um, what the heck was the development environment that I was using? I don't even remember. That was so many years ago. And then, uh, truth be told, as time went on, uh, after I made the first few apps, I went... Oh, what did I use? It wasn't, it wasn't, it's now MIT App Inventor, but it wasn't that. There was some, uh, some other really basic, um, compilers, like basically just block building for Android apps. And I used those to make a few. And then after that, I just went to Elance and farmed it out to people in Chennai, India when I needed something made because it was way better than me wasting my hours on it when I could pay them just a few dollars and they would spend literally weeks on <laughs> app development and turn out a very cool app at the end of it. So that's what I did in the end. I just paid 
participated teams in in Chennai, and it worked out very, very well. Okie dokie. Got that stretched on there. That was a little bit more exertion than I needed for tonight. <laughs> it's not easy to stretch this stuff. It is not intended to be stretched. <laughs> Most definitely. I got it inside out. Come on now. Don't be like that. There we go. Uh, let's just shrink one down at a time. Why not? And let's go right there. And we will hit her. That will hold these down. There is double-sided tape underneath here as well. This will nicely bond it right to the frame, just tickety boo. It worked very well on the Red October build. This is the way I'm going to do all of my ASCs from now on. Except I might do them larger. Uh, well, particularly on if I if I don't have the motors installed on the quad, I'll do basically the whole length of the ESC and seal it right to the arm. That way you don't get blades of grass and crud underneath there, but. See, that looks much better than zip ties. Much, much nicer. Much cleaner. I like that. That'll do. Repeat three more times. Repeat. Where'd my drink go? Oh, I need a, need a better way of stretching this stuff. Let's try this. Let's use our brains. Ha 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 ha. use my noodle a little more than my strengths. I don't think that's going to be enough though. I don't think these pliers go big enough. Hmm, maybe. No, but it gets it part of the way there. It gets it part of the way. <laughs> Use a little strength for the rest of the way. I seem to remember this easier on the other night on the live show. That one's all wrinkly, but I'll straighten out in a moment. Beauty. Beauty, beauty. Actually, it looks like poop right now, but it's not in a second. Hit it. I like these little B speed controls too. A lot of, like, they're definitely not top of the line anymore <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but I had such good luck with them. I haven't had one burn up or fail in any way yet. And I just flashed the Red October up to the, the newest. Uh, Bill Heli firmware, and of course it just worked. You just plug it in, and just it just works. Just never a problem. I like things like that where I can plug them in, open the the uh, the GUI, the programming environment, and just hit read, and it gives me the info, and hit write, and it just goes through and does it. I like that. There's something to be said for that, even when things aren't the newest, fanciest thing out there. Chai is here. What's poppin'? We are stretching each rink over the end of the arms and we're fixing up this quad that I smashed into the ground today, which was awesome. But now, as a result, it has a nifty new wide-angle camera lens and well, some heat shrink and a lighter uh, receiver and soon to be better retained speed controls. And it's going to be going to be a good quad again. My daily flyer, I love this thing. But I think I might cut the live show short because all I'm doing is grunting and groaning when I'm reefing on this stuff. You guys get the idea what I'm going to do tomorrow. Vapor bath this in my rice cooker with some acetone, make it stronger and smoother again. 
put that back on the front so I can bring you some HD footage with my run cam. Put a couple of zip ties on here, zip tie my antennas up, and we're back in the air. We're done deal. Put a little bit of Velcro on the top plate and then focus my my front lens. And yeah, we're good to go. Back in the air again, just like new. Had a little maintenance. I might hit, while well, I've got that receiver out, I might hit that uh, SP Racing F3 flight control with some uh, conformal coating because why not? Um, why not weather seal it a little bit while we're while we're in here while we've got it apart? Can't hurt. All right, guys. I will catch you guys a little later this week. Uh, I do. I have a video. I'm gonna try and bring out a video Wednesday. I think. Uh, I'm gonna try something a little different on the channel. I'm gonna do kind of a one-stop, like a not a vlog-style video, but maybe a little bit of uh, all the updates and what's coming on the channel. And then I have a Raspberry Pi magazine video coming. I have the run cam repair video coming. A whole bunch in the queue for you guys. So it should be a lot of fun. All right, guys, have a fantastic week. I will see you guys in a few days. Cheers.